We're going to talk a little bit about the application of a bootstrap approach to building a confidence interval and specifically for comparing a numeric variable for two different groups. So we'll also remind ourselves a little bit about when or why we might prefer to use a bootstrapping type approach. So here we've got this simplified example of looking at um, chick weight gain. So um, when these chicks are born, they're given one of two dyes, meat meal or casein, and after six weeks, um, their weight gain is measured. Okay, and they want to be compared in some way um, to try and decide, um, is there a difference in the, the two diets? And specifically, is one diet more effective at weight gain than the other? Later, we'll look at the full data set and implementing this approach using R. For now, we want to keep just a subset of the data to keep it simple so we can visualize and discuss all the concepts easily. So just a reminder that we might try using a bootstrapping approach if we say have a small sample size and our large sample um, assumptions are not met, so we can't use these large sample approaches. Um, if we're working with a fairly complicated estimate where it's difficult to estimate the standard error, or we um, have a difficult time estimating the sampling distribution or knowing what shape it would be. So if we have some complicated measure like the difference in the, say, 80th percentile of weight for the two, or some other sort of composite measure where it's not simple to estimate the standard error for that. In this video, as we work our way through it, we're going to compare two different estimates. The first estimate that we're going to think of comparing, okay, I'm going to label it estimate one, is we're going to look at the difference in the mean weight for a casein minus the mean for a meat meal. And we're also going to look at a second estimate. And again, we're going to do this just so we can look at building a confidence interval for a difference in means using a bootstrapping approach as well as looking at a difference in the sample medians. Okay, so the median weight for casein minus the median weight for meat meal. And again, I'm throwing the hat on there to represent it's a sample estimate from data. So if we were to work this out for our example, we'd find that the mean for casein is 349.25, and the mean for meat meal is 316. Here are the difference in means is 33.25, right? So the mean for casein on average is 33.25 larger than the mean for meat meal. If we look at the sample medians, for casein, it's 373.5, for meat meal, 315, and the difference in medians is 58.5. A reminder that hypothesis testing um, starts by assuming the null hypothesis is true, and in that case, the focal point is the null value, right? That there's no difference between these two. A confidence interval works with the estimate itself, okay? And the focal point is the estimate, okay? It allows um, for there to be a difference, where, like I said, the null hypothesis starts by assuming the null is true, assuming there is no difference, and that's what everything um, is centered around. The confidence interval is centered around the estimate itself, okay? So the confidence interval kind of works with the idea that the meat meal and the casein diets may be different. Okay, so when we use this bootstrapping type approach, we're gonna randomly sample with replacement five observations from within the meat meal. And we're gonna random sample with replacement four observations from the casein. Okay, so when we do this bootstrapping or resampling, we're gonna keep these two separate. And that's because we're allowing for the idea that meat meal and casein may be different when we're building this um, estimate and the confidence interval around it. So let's go through and look at the idea of pulling a um, bootstrap sample. So I'm going to call this bootstrap sample number one. And again, we're going to reach into these five here, and we're going to randomly sample five observations with replacement. So let's suppose we reach in and we end up with 315. Right? We put the 315 back in the pool of these, randomly select another. Suppose it comes out to be 380. Put it back in the pool, randomly select another. Suppose we end up with the 315 again. Put it back in the pool, we end up with 325. Put that back in the pool, randomly select one, and we end up with 315 again. Right. So a reminder, the same observation can show up multiple times. Certain observations may never show up in a bootstrap resample. Now we're going to resample four observations with replacement from the casein 
So suppose the first one we end up with is 379. Okay, I'll keep the line in here just to help visually separate them. Put that back in the pool. The next resample, 260, put it back in. Next one, 390, put it back in the pool. And then we end up with 379 again. Now we can think of for this bootstrap um, resample, calculating estimate one and estimate two. Okay, so I'm gonna label this here, estimate one. And again, I'm gonna call it B1, meaning it's the first estimate that we're looking at from the first bootstrap sample. If we were to work these out, we could find the mean um, in the bootstrap sample for these four casing observations is gonna come out to be 352. The mean for the five meat meal observations comes out to 330. And the difference in means is 22. If we look at the second estimate, and again, I'll label it B1, I'm indicating it's for our first bootstrap sample, the median of these four observations comes out to 379. The median of these five here comes out to be 315. And the difference in medians is 64. Right, so you can already see we're starting to get some idea of the variability in these estimates. If we ended up with a different sample, the estimate could be a little bit lower. Right here, if we end up with a different sample, our difference in medians might be a little bit higher. So a bootstrapping approach um, repeats this multiple times. So let's get to looking at bootstrap sample number two. Right, so again, we're gonna sample five observations with replacement from the meat meal group. Suppose the first one we end up with is 380. We put that back in the pool, randomly select another, 315, put it back, 257. Then we get 315 again, and the 257. Now we're gonna randomly sample four observations with replacement from the casing group. Suppose the first one comes out to be 390, put it back in. Next one's 260, put it back in the pool. We end up with 390 again, and then 368. And again, for the second bootstrap sample, we can calculate um, our bootstrap estimates. So I'm gonna label this estimate number one. It's the first estimate we're working with. And B2 indicates coming from the second bootstrap sample. If we were to calculate the sample mean for the four casing observations, we're gonna find it's 352. The mean for the meat meal group, 304.8. The difference in means, 47.2. We can also go through and calculate the second estimate for our second bootstrap sample. And the median for these four here is 379. The median of these five here comes out to 315. I made up with a difference in medians of 64. Bootstrap approach, again, repeats this B times up to getting bootstrap sample number B. We're gonna get B different bootstrap um, estimates. A kind of guideline for the number of, for B, okay, the number of bootstrap estimates. Um, 10,000 or more is kind of a very rough guideline. Really, there's no limitation. The only limitation is computing power and how long it takes to, to run through these resamples. An important note is that increasing B, okay, the number of resamples, does not increase the amount of information in the data. Meaning we, here we only have nine observations. It doesn't matter if we run a bootstrap one billion times, we still only have the power of these nine observations. Okay. So what kind of increasing B does is get us a kind of more reliable estimate of the standard error okay, of all these observations. It doesn't gain um, more information. So now we can use all these different bootstrap estimates to build up our confidence interval. In a previous video, we talked a little bit about um, bootstrap confidence intervals. There we did it for um, just one single estimate or, or um, one numeric variable. We talked a little bit about a percentile approach, a basic approach, a normal approach, and these things. So we're gonna start to look a little bit at how we can implement this approach on the full data set using R. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos. Stick around guys, because we got a lot more. Thanks for watching our video. I want you to have a nice time.